Hi, everyone. Sorry, we're a tiny bit late. There was a small problem with the projector, but it's fixed, so we can start. Uh, let's go for the art panel, if this thing works. Yes, OK. The usual suspects, same as last year, myself, uh, uh, CCB baseman Ben. We have Ausger, uh, the art director, Torve, the creative director of the online, and Sven Björk, the art producer. So the idea, before starting a bit the dialogue and have questions coming from you guys, uh, we were thinking of showing you a bit what we've been doing recently, what we're working on. You've seen some of that uh, in the presentation, in the EVE keynote that, uh, that uh, Torve did yesterday. And there is also a few more things in the, in the presentation that we want to, uh, to show you. Ah, there you go. So what's cooking in the art kitchen at CCP? Well, as you know, we're working on launchers and, and missiles, so that's something we're going to show you a few more things uh, uh, on that topic uh, in the presentation now. Of course, we're working on effects as well. That's something that has been going on for a while, not only on the effects themselves, but also on the on the, the effect system. So that's why we're not always going as fast as we would want, but uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work also under the hood, and we'll show you some, uh, some prototypes of uh, what we're doing at the moment. Ships redesign and the V3 project, of course, going on and on and going pretty well. We have a, a, a few more samples to show you today, and we can discuss that later. And a few things also around the avatars, that uh, uh, some of them that uh, Torve showed you, and uh, a couple of things that we have also extra there. I also wanted to take the, the opportunity to uh, uh, show you the whole art team. That's basically the group that is now working uh, on EVE, so mixed of uh, concept artists, 3D artists, technical artists. You could, ask to, uh, you could add to that group also a, a bunch of graphics programmers, QA people, and so on. So that's all the, all the people that are making all the, the eye candy that you're enjoying so much. And now the same group sorted by eye color, because I realized that in our internal phone book, there is a function where you can sort people by eye color. And I thought it could be interesting. So let's look at the, the missiles and the, what we have today. So basically today, if you're looking at your launchers, that's pretty much the result of the, the examination. But what we want to do and what we've, we've shown you already yesterday is something a bit more interesting in terms of looks, functionality, realism, and so on. So we're working on the missiles themselves, on the launchers, and on all the, all the effects that, that go around it. We've done uh, all the concepts has been uh, has been done already. The modeling is very well uh, uh, is going very well, and we're close to completion. You've seen some of the some of the the result in the clip that uh, Torve was showing yesterday. I'm just going to go through here. I don't know if you guys want to say anything about the the launchers and the design, or if you want to wait for after. Okay, <laughs> sounds great. I'm going to go through a bit the different types here. As you can see, we have different uh, stages. Some of them are at the concept stage. Some of them are shown as, a, as models as well. Are you showing some of the animations later? Sorry? Are you showing some of the missile animations? No. OK. You did? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Here is a, a, one, of the, one of the early stages of one of the launchers. We're, we're much further than that at the moment. And here is a snapshot of the different types with textures and so on fitted on a ship. And you've seen them animated yesterday, so I'm not going to show that again. Here is an overview of the missiles themselves. You can see the different scales and the, the, the design of the individuals. Do you have anything? I don't know if you guys know Torve, Ausger. Oh, you special. can see the Citadel like large missiles there. I don't know, are, are they as big as an Apollo rocket or like an ICBM? These are huge, and the, and the launcher itself. Yes, we, we don't see the scale there. Yeah, they're at least as tall as Harpa. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's very important that they have fins. Yes. The, <laughs> yes. <balance. laughs> exactly. Well, I guess missiles in space could be designed like bricks but you just don't find it very cool. 
There's also just, uh, just for keeping balance. And also, uh, we're also redesigning the explosions themselves. So we're, we're not just doing the launchers, we decided to take the entire uh, thing. So it is the, uh, yeah, like you say, see here, it's the launchers, it's the explosions, it's the trails that follow and come out of the missiles, the way that the missile kind of moves. And the, uh, and the animations of when the missiles are, are shooting out, you actually are not seeing that in the, in the video, because those are not ready. And the explosions are... Mm -hmm. The effect, like the missile effects and explosions, are actually going to hit like hard or you know damage points like turrets. They're not going to be in the center of the ship anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also the like the look of the explosions is now determined by the damage type of the missile itself. Uh, that's, that will also uh, account for the sound of the missile itself. So you can see very clearly whether it's like an EM mm -hmm. missile or or whether it's doing thermal damage or kinetic. But they're also going to reduce the size of them a little bit, so they won't be, you know, you'll still see your ship. <laughs> I do have a video. I'm gonna, we're we're going to show you a few things. It's very much R&D. It's a, a screen capture straight from the graphics programmers or the technical artists and the artists working on that. So there is no final art direction. There is no technical polishing in it. We haven't looked even for some of them into uh, performance and so on, but it's the, the work that we're putting in place to, uh, to uh, move forward. So here is a little video. So this one is showing you more the way the missiles behave in space. We're also looking at breaking the map. Right now, when you group your launchers, you actually fire one missile, which does like n times the damage of a regular missile. And, and we're looking at trying to split them apart, of course, and make them look more like this. Sorry? <laughs> We can actually start playing Kaldari. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and explosions as well is something that we're looking into. Explosions that are uh, for uh, most of them uh, uh, being redone and also looking into the different type of damage linked to it and so on. So that's something we're, we've been doing a lot of work, just gathering references, doing concept art even. We have guys basically drawing and painting explosions to help the, the visual effects artists. Uh, achieving what the, what the art director and the team wants to, to give. So I'm going to show you here another video, which is also same deal. The, the explosions are not even at scale compared to the ship on that video. Everything is very much work in progress and uh, an exploration. So here's a quick look at what it could look like. Yes, this was uh, uh, like an early stage of the yeah. explosions. We have already gone a little bit further with it. We're also looking at other things that are uh, probably for a bit further in the future, but that the, the, the artists and especially the technical artists have been working on and looking at. This, uh, this one, we're going to uh, show you also a small video here, which is uh, uh, once again very experimental. And have a look. So you can see that the damage here is localized also. Don't look too much at the explosion themselves and the shock wave and so on. It's not And there is more. Just to mention, before you click onto sure. it, uh, this trick is done through texture mapping, cube mapping. This is actually mm -hmm. not geometry, these are textures. Very clever uh, uh, shader programming that's going on there. 
And here is a, another evolution of the, the same kind of idea. Again, a video that is totally low res and, uh, and experimental, but to show you a bit the kind of things that we are looking at. This is so totally missing people, like being sucked out into the cold vacuum of space. Like a little particle generator, just spewing them out, like snowflakes. And ship redesigns and V3. That's of course the ship redesign is something that we've been talking quite a bit about. We've shown already a lot of the, well, you've seen some of the ships and we've shown also a bunch of, uh, of the, the concept art. The V3, we're gonna look at some of, some of them afterwards. The, the V3 program is going pretty well. It's a, we knew it was going to be a long effort and it is, but it's, go, it's moving forward pretty well. I think Torve, you showed some of, the, some of those yesterday, right? So we're gonna just, I'm just gonna go through a, a, a lineup of the, the Amar and then a few more after that, just to, for the fun of watching it. The idea behind that was a bit to show you, and maybe we can elaborate. I mean, of course, when we're doing the V3 uh, project, it's, uh, it opens a lot of possibilities in terms of skinning and decals and so on. We've talked about that very often. And we're actually redoing uh, the entire uh, uh, line of, uh, of all the, the, the faction and, and, uh, and corporation variations for all of the ships. So basically, even if you don't see all of them in game yet, at the moment, we're actually building up the entire fleet with all the possible variations, hence the, the uh, more crazy uh, colors in there, which, uh, which is quite interesting, I think. Yeah, I, I like it. So now you could start flying Caldari to uh, enjoy the launchers and Galante to have a, a sports car. It's, it's perfect. Uh, we'll, I'm going to show you also a bit of the ship redesigns. Uh, this is really going on across all the races at the moment. And we're piling up a lot of concept art, just working on the, working on the, the different uh, things. I don't know, Oskar, well, maybe you have a few things. When there? our concept artist uh, has extra time, when he's uh, might be waiting for a modeler to do a block out, then he goes into like redesigning some old ships and, and preparing them for modeling. And in some cases, uh, it was necessary to uh, redesign them since uh, the stealth launchers will carry like huge uh, seats launchers, uh, stealth bombers. We had to change the shape of them. This is the bomb under the stealth bomber. It's going to be visible at all times. We might note that the uh, bombs will actually have their own fixed point. So they are, you know, they will always be on the same place under the ship. And we have also a few new things like the salvage drone that you probably saw yesterday as well already, which is moving forward pretty well. And then a few things about the avatars that we're also working on. I mean, this is, of course, like all the rest, uh, uh, very much a work of collaboration with the, the other teams and, and teams working on the, on the design as well, the, the game designer on it. So on the avatars, the few things that we've had. Uh, hmm, eh? 
Ooh. 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 Look at that. The sleeve tattoos, we talked about them last year, actually, and they are finally in. That's, uh, that's pretty nice, actually. And uh, besides that, we're doing also other things. We're looking at the, uh, the skin tones, just offering a wider range and more variation. I'll guess maybe you have some things uh, to say about why and how we're doing that. Well, we always wanted to have a wider range in the beginning, but there were like technical issues with that. We fix that. And then another thing is the bloodline blending as well, which is uh, uh, something that we started to experiment with when we were actually redoing all the characters. Forbidden love. Sorry? This is forbidden love. This is the forbidden root, the blending of Amar and Minmatar. Mm -hmm. It's what you needed. Exactly. Yeah. So here, for example, if you take a typical uh, a Brutor and an Amar Amar, without any sculpting, that's the base characters. And if you blend that DNA, you end up with a mix completely in the middle. So this is, there is absolutely no sculpting or no modification besides mixing the two DNAs to, to end up with this result here in the middle. It's a man baby. <laughs> same for the females, same experiment here. And that's pretty much it. So now if you have questions or things you want to discuss, please. I don't know how is the, the microphone yeah. situation. I Apparently think you just have to shout, if uh, I remember well. Why does the purifier look the same? Why uh, does uh, the purifier look the same? What you're seeing of the purifier is uh, uh, in a different state than all the other ones. So. It all, it's actually uh, before we enlarged it and uh, made it fit the uh, launchers. So it's, it's, it's an earlier design. It, it's going to change a lot. Mm -hmm. it, does that answer your question? Um, with the new missiles and launcher designs, are you going to change the icons as well for the ammunition and the launchers? Because I know when you redesign the models for turrets. You redesign the, um, like the market icons, and there was a big outcry because of that. Will you be doing the same for missiles and launchers as well? Uh, initially, we're not going to be doing rendered icons. We actually like the representative icons, the 2D icons, which are painted for the missile launchers. However, you will be able to get a preview of both the launchers and the ammo in the same manner that you can get a turret preview today. So you can click on it and see it spin and see it unfold in the info window. And same for the missile, you can see it and, and, and enjoy its vertical nature. <laughs> so uh, I'm assuming that you guys worked on the, the new rookie ships. Uh, is is the, the new Reaper representative of a more curvy Minotaur line than what we are used to, because the new Reaper doesn't fit in my vision of what a Minotaur ship is. It's too curvy. I mean, there are the wings and whatnot, but it's, it's, it, it's too blended, it seems. Uh, <laughs> you think the new Reaper is too curvy? Mm. Well, it's certainly not what we want, I would say. Uh, I think we're trying to be faithful to the uh, original vision, but I'll take it into consideration. We don't know which of one of the guys you're applauding, so... <laughs> Okay, now we do. Okay, now we do. Uh, have you been doing, doing any work on celestial objects in space, like uh, like in scanning down sites that just look like uh, piled up post modules with funny names, but like and the texture on uh, on things like that. Some of them look like they're untextured and and just a pile pile up of some things. 
Uh, can you repeat the question? There's a lot of uh, <coughs> acoustics here are really off. bad <laughs> for the performers. So move the mic away or something like that. We couldn't hear what you said. Uh, you know, like uh, like when you are scanning down sites, you get these uh, things that that you salvage places and places that are out in space and. Uh, the, the, the things that are supposed to look like buildings and things like that are like piled up past modules with this name. Have you been re trying to redesign the things in uh, celestial things in space? Yeah, we are talking about redesigning celestials in posits. Yes, yes, yep. and, and in, instead of having just piled up post modules mm -hmm. trying to make things that are... Uh, well... I mean, that's a, that's a big discussion. Uh, Christopher mentioned yesterday that uh, we actually are uh, thinking about overhauling the entire POS system. And uh, in that overhaul, that would entail uh, complete remodeling of most of the modules because you would assemble them in a different way. We've just placed it on what we call a design runway, which means that designers are looking at it or starting to look at it. Uh, and, uh, and we haven't committed to a special date to, for when to release it or exactly how it, it will function. But, uh, but you're right, in the, the world objects and the POSs uh, are, are things that we haven't really uh, taken a look at again, you know, uh, since we upgraded the models in Trinity. And then this is not yet on the, on the art side, so... But V3 does not only go for ship. I mean, we need to do world objects. We need to do capital ships. We, you know, we have to do all of them, basically. Like we mentioned yesterday, because we want to upgrade the lighting model inside the game, and uh, that really can't be done properly until most of the objects, like also the asteroids, for example, have been uh, V3'd. Although oh, there's only some things are going to be like really coolly lit, and the others are going to look like not cool. For a number of people, uh, their visual identity when they created their characters back in the day uh, was very much who they were. And with the character, the new character creator, they were forced into a bloodline that didn't quite look like something they wanted for themselves, like very cure females especially. Uh, do you plan to have any of this character blending, uh, race blending, or any change of bloodline to accommodate the fact that we don't look like we would like to look? Yeah, I mean, what we are looking at Eve is a very open-ended game, I mean, and, and one of the reasons we removed a lot of the kind of, uh, kind of dampened out the difference in attributes and, and, and evened out the uh, like starting skills and so on with the, with the races, you know, when we were redoing the NPE is because it's whether you roll a Kaldari or a Galante after like several months of playing or, or several years, it actually really doesn't matter, you know, it shouldn't matter because you can just, you know, uh, define your own path. And in the same spirit, uh, we are looking at uh, the option of allowing you to actually completely overhaul your uh, look, as if you just, we call it omniplasty, for those who are into South Park. Uh, actually just uh, totally redoing, and there's even talk of like gender change for the right price. So, uh, uh, because you can do it today, why couldn't you do it in the future? Hi, I have two questions. The first is, I know you're looking at tweaking the HUD a bit, and I'm wondering, um, have you thought of whether it could be modular in some way? I mean, we could add additional information potentially, and for me, for example, for myself, I would love to have a tracking indicator to show how close I am to being able to track or not, but I'm sure there's other extras that certain pilots would like, and I just wonder, the, the HUD is looking rather dated now as well, so... I would answer, but I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> the reverb is terrible with the microphone. Like maybe, you could re hear? maybe you could repeat without the microphone just for us. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, I know you're looking at the head up, the HUD, a bit, at the design of the HUD. I know it's one of the most, it's got a very old element in the design. And I'm wondering if you're considering more modular ways of adjusting it to pilot preference. For example, I would love to have a tracking indicator on the target to see mm -hmm. whether I'm tracking or not or how close. But I'm sure there's lots of other sort of the data that the client knows that could be shown in the hub. Absolutely, and it's stored away in some horrible tab in the overview. That's actually kind of outside the realm of, like, that's more in the realm of UI than art right now. Uh, I can tell you that we are looking at uh, a HUD Riva that's also on a design runway, and uh, we are looking at it both, just the HUD and, uh, 
and doing a more uh, tactical uh, overview, being able to switch to a more tactical view of, of the battlefield. Uh, these are things that are simply being concepted and designed. We don't have anything actual or committed dates on it, but tracking is a great example of something that should be, like, you should be able to turn it on and off and see it more clearly, especially like when people are getting into turrets. It's one of the things that, you know, you have to know, and, and we don't push that information uh, yeah. well enough to people. The other question is that all the ships look great, but a lot of the time when we play, you, you can't see the ships very well. And I'm wondering if you'd look at more I guess like a dynamic camera systems where maybe your ship and the target ship would be shown and the mm -hmm. camera would, would adjust ongoing or other ideas around how the camera angle could be uh, automated to show the ships better than they are now. Did you not have a cinema camera? No. Oh, right. no. Oh. We didn't put it into the presentation. But we, yeah, we, we have some work going on with a, 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 a cinematic camera, a camera that could be a, uh, triggered actually you know, for much more dynamic views and much more appropriate to what's happening exactly and not completely by default. We're working yeah. on that. We have like tech definitely for, mm. for doing something like that and we've spent some R&D time in investigating things like this but uh, we're, you know, it still needs some game design and, and you know, figuring out how to do it without like, ruining your you know, info of the battlefield or like, your responses. It needs sort of yeah, clever programming or, or yeah, design because you don't want it to be annoying. You don't want the camera always to be looking in the wrong direction at the, at the wrong target. Another thing that uh, we've, we've had a prototype, we had it up and running in-house, but it doesn't perform well enough and there are some issues that we need to resolve technically before we can use it, is, is showing picture in picture so that like the, the shape that you currently have selected or something like that, you get a proper like a zoomed in close-up of that shape. That would al also allow you to enjoy the ships more. So you still have your view of the battlefield, but you get a zoomed in view of your enemy and like, can see the punishment that you're instilling on him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hi, I was wondering if you guys, uh, when you redo capital ships, are going to be doing more animated ships in general. I mean, for example, triage carriers don't have an animation, whereas dreads and siege and rock rolls and their funny siege thing do. Like carriers could close up their little fighter bays or something since they can't launch fighters or so more animations on on like or, I mean, big ships. Yeah. Yes, we would love to do that. I mean, we have stuff like that on our like on the art roadmap, basically for uh, you know it's come up. We've discussed it and it's it's a pretty big leap forward though for us. So we. We don't know when or how we're going to do it yet, but it's definitely on a radar. And it's something that's also uh, thought of in the designs, uh, the new designs, and uh, uh, the modelers built in some, you know, the possibility of having some animations, but uh, we're waiting for the tech, basically. Mm -hmm. I have one other question, too, about the Naglfar getting its third turret. Any chance of uh, that happening so that you don't have to split weapon systems on it? I, from what we've heard, that's an art bottleneck more than a design bottleneck. I'm sorry. Sorry. I didn't hear. To add more hard points to an avatar. Is that an art bottleneck? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if design wants us to add more slots, then yeah. that can I be mean, done. <laughs> we can always add more hard points to it, I suppose. I mean, if you know, we, I mean, that's not a decision that we usually do. We take into account like just the look and the feel and what it does, but you know, we're not adding into it. Mm. It already exists. That's the thing. It has already enough threat points, but they don't show visually, because there's not turret hard points on, on the structure. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, if, you know, if game design says that they would want something like that, or am I misunderstanding the question, maybe? In the, in the past, game design has said that the, the bottleneck is you guys, not them. Uh, <laughs> so dudes. Sure. Chess boxing. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it's, there, there is a, there is, okay, it's a discussion we've had in, in many, 
occasions with many different people. It's a discussion we've had with the CSM as well and so on. There is this kind of uh, uh, mythical art bottleneck that prevents grandiose things to happen. And uh, it's true and it's not true. I mean, a bottleneck, you know, it, if there is really something that, is, that, that justifies a, a very heavy workload and a lot of effort very focused on something specific, we always do it and we always can do it. It's a bottleneck in the way that it might delay the ideal release of it. You know, like Torvi often says, it, uh, you know, it doesn't take one month to nine women to make one baby. It's still, uh, you know, it's not by adding people that, that things happen faster anyway. So we are not a bottleneck, but our process is very often very slow. And because of the sheer amount of content in game, each time you start to make variations or, or, or modifications that affect a lot of things, we very quickly look at of, of man month or, or man years of work very easily. So in that way, yes, we are bottleneck, but we're not a bottleneck in the way that art says no, because we're busy at fine-tuning the color on that ship, so we're not going to look at that. That never happens. We are, in many ways, beside things like the, uh, the, the redesign of some of the ships, for example, which is a very visual thing, but in many ways, we are often serving the demands of game design. And we, even if, I mean, it's a very collaborative work, but we're not the ones deciding, you know, those kind of things. The nebulae are procedurally generated, uh, yet at this time we only see them change once per system. Uh, are there any plans uh, to have them once, one, uh, differ per, on a per system basis? Can you repeat the question without uh, are you saying that we used to have them by system, but now we have them by region? The nebulae change per, uh, do, do not look different on a per system basis today. Uh, are there any chance to, to provide that functionality because they're procedurally generated? Well, the original system actually changed them uh, it was on constellation jumps when we switched nebulas, and, uh, and there was a limited set of nebulas. There were fewer than 63 nebulas that we just, you know, we rolled, it was the modulus of the constellation ID. So we just, you know, we switched nebulas based on what constellation you were in, but we picked from a smaller set of nebulas than you actually have today. So you had fewer nebulas. Yeah. That being said, I mean, we added, what, 67 new nebulas into the game, and uh, it was just a decision on bandwidth and cost, basically, that we went with the region idea. So we're, you know, it's, there's nothing in our plan now to make it more granular than that, because that's just, you know, a big download and a yeah, big client patch and a big... You also, know, the you fight have to support that. The yeah. misunderstanding is maybe because you mentioned the fact that they're uh, procedural, and uh, there are no way in the production of the asset itself, but it's not in the client. So we don't have this uh, uh, particle system in client that generates the, the cube map for you when you're in a system. It's a file that has been processed and rendered and post-produced uh, in advance. So this, the, the procedural part is not at all in the, in the runtime. Uh, exactly, so isn't it just a question of storage space? No, yeah, that and money. time and money yeah, yeah. and, you know, it's a, it's a gigantic, it's, a, the, it's really, I mean, if you're looking at per system, we're talking about how many nebulas then, how many cube maps, Five, thousands of them. Thousands, yeah. And uh, to be honest, I mean, they cost a lot to make yeah. the nebulas okay. there. And, and there was a creative decision to go for higher fidelity and less modularity. Now, certainly that decision was made. Like, yeah. we, we want to go all in for fidelity because we want them to last a long time. And, you know, I think uh, we are really happy with the file fidelity. And we actually haven't, like, given you the full package because we uh, built them in uh, higher resolutions than are being used in the, in the game today. So uh, we can either provide higher resolution templates as a separate download in the future or, or once your machines are up for it, uh, you know, provide them for download. I think, yeah, yeah I think we would definitely situation. rather explore some additions to maybe uh, systems or constellations or L whatever, L like light lighting. Lighting, you know, changes. Yeah. So lighting or effect or something, you know, to show you that you're jumping rather than, but not going more granular into the cube maps themselves. The, the backend system also supports creating unique systems. Uh, that's some work that we just need to take on in the future. You know, these uh, unique storyline systems, uh, like, like the Eve Gate and so on, that, that need, you know, special attention and you travel there to see it. Uh, the the backend supports it, uh, but uh, as of yet, we haven't, like, made an effort to offer all of these. 
How, how long did it take again to build this? Like from the first meeting until we. The Nibbles, yeah. about a year. Over a year. Over oh, one, one, one and a half. Year, one and a half, one and half year. You mean like uh, concept art and so on? Yeah, I mean, you have picked yourselves full of great stuff, mm -hmm. full of sketches, and you can see on the There is no policy. There is no policy. <laughs> You're just so busy, you know, doing the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the question was basically, uh, is there a policy uh, that explains the fact that we don't see uh, as much of the concept art and the whole creative process for the art uh, uh, on the web or, or different places? There is no policy really, and like Oscar was saying, it's just we're always very busy. We're trying to do it a bit through some of the dev blogs, for example, and so on. But definitely, and especially, for example, on the new websites, I've started, and it's actually somewhere in my to-do list to, to go through what we have in terms of concept art there and try to dig a bit in the archives. But, but it's, it's very often the kind of thing that if you didn't start and if it's not just something that you have to maintain, it's, uh, you know, it, it becomes like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. But first, I need to finish that. Okay, I'm, oh, no, there is that there. And, you know. Can we just see, like, a finished product, like a finished release? Uh, nice paintings, but like all the sketches mm -hmm. and all the stuff is like, where is it? Yeah. Yeah. I really like it and I like seeing it here, so I'm like, publish more. Well, hopefully we'll be able to do another EVA art book in the future. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, uh, the nebulae that you've introduced into Empire Space, they, are, they look fantastic. Um, have you got any plans to revamp the backgrounds in, say, magnetar systems and pulsar systems in wormholes? Because a lot of the wormhole people feel that the the empire the empire guys have got it real nice and pretty now, and it's looking a little dated in wormhole space. Is there any plans to update the, you know, the the actual magnetar itself or the pulsar and and the visualization of that in the background? So. Make it Prettier. We're most prettier, yeah. Uh, we don't have any plans for updating the background, at least not now. It's not something we discussed, but uh, all effects are on our radar now. We're looking into, you know, we're collecting both data and, you know, where's best to start, basically. We are just starting this, you know, process of actually revamping all the effects. The pulsars definitely would be something that we would look at. It's really just a question of priority and budget at the moment. Yeah. It's just Again, time. Uh, yeah. Well, there's only, there's only a few systems with those effects in them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. but it's also, I mean, we're looking at the V3 now, which, you know, like Torve said, it, it gives us, you know, maybe more lighting possibilities or effect possibilities with the ships themselves. So, you know, we're also kind of figuring out what step to take next, what is the next logical step. Uh, two quick questions, probably more for the UI side, but first one is the particle effects in certain missions are extremely laggy. Are there any plans for an option to disable them? Do you mean the, the clouds? Sorry? The uh, cloud effects, kind of the particles. Yes. yes. Yeah. You work. We can, it's about the clouds, so we can say that we're redoing the clouds. <laughs> no, but uh, is there an option to turn them off? No. I don't, don't think so. No, there's no option to turn them off. But uh, yeah, we can say we're, we're working on those clouds. These are really old and, and we want to replace them. You could, of course, hack your client to you figure out the exact path of the cloud and install a, like an empty uh, text file with the exact file name of the cloud uh, web file and, and place it <laughs> in your directory, but that's breaking the ULA. And then the other question um, <laughs> was on the side of cameras. When, I sh when I'm actually looking at a ship, when it explodes, is it possible to let the camera stay there for three seconds to see the explosion? Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. We're going to try to get that done. 
yes. before the end of like it, uh, it is on our uh, immediate roadmap it's basically released. it's yeah. it's a, of course a matter of priorities what we're doing like missile launchers and explosions are our, our biggest priority right now but you know we have, we have, that's, this is something we've discussed we, yeah me exactly. too <laughs> uh, I think our time is up. We've been asked to be uh, as concise as possible because they need all the time in the world to prepare properly for the big keynotes later, so they need the room. So we're gonna have to call it a day, at least for the art. So thank you very much, and also, thank you. Thank you.